This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. God will take care of you even in the midst of a famine, in the midst of hard times. His promise is you will have more than enough. Uh, why? Because of Him. Because you look for Him and you look for His love and you look to Him. And we are living in a world today where people are looking to everything else. They keep looking to the abilities of men. They keep looking to the abilities of government and, and nobody's looking to Him. I mean, what else has to happen before you realize that God's trying to get your attention? What else has to take place before you realize that God's trying to get you to look to Him, to pay attention to Him? He is the one that will provide. He is your supply house. Calling all men from around the world. Join us for Mentality 2020. A man that cannot control his emotions is the weakest man on the planet. I'm nervous to share this message with you today. I got an honest question. Because it's going to get nitty and gritty. We should be able to talk about certain stuff. Real men, real talk. Join us for a revival of manhood at the Mentality Men's Conference. You don't want to miss out. Register now at CreflowDollarMinistries.org. Father, we thank you for this and other opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. Thank you, Lord, that revelation knowledge will flow freely, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. And Father, I pray that tonight you will speak through my vocal cords, think through my mind. I pray that this message will cause a turnaround in the lives of these, your precious sheep. Thank you, Lord, for this Wednesday night crew. Thank you for those who are hungry and thirsty for your word. And I pray, God, tonight that they will be filled. Holy Spirit, invade our atmosphere, invade our thinking, invade our lives, that we may see you as our strong tower. And we praise you for it now. In the wonderful, mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, amen. Well, praise God. Welcome to Wednesday night Bible study. And tonight we're, we're, we're going to get into something here. Um, I'm going to talk to you about living in the no lack zone. Living in the no lack zone. You see, a lot of people have tried to get their needs met and they've tried to stay out of lack through their relationship with principles instead of having a relationship with a person. And of course, I'm referring to the person of Jesus Christ. And as we look at this tonight, I just want to show you the promises of God. I want you to see him as your supply house and, and, and whatever lack that may be knocking on your door. You don't have to fear lack. You have an inheritance. You have a promise. With Jehovah Jireh, you have a promise with God Almighty that whatever the lack is in your life, you can live. And this is what I want to convince you of tonight. You can live in the no lack zone. Praise God. So let me, let's start off with a couple of scriptures here and uh, take good notes. You might want to call your neighbors. I definitely want you to share this with as many people as you can. Because in this time, with all the things that are going on, I, I want you to recognize you, don't know, you do not have to be afraid. God's, again, got you covered. Let's begin tonight in the book of Psalms 33, verse 18 through 19. Psalms 33, verse 18 through 19. And I want to look at this in the King James and the Message Bible. Let's establish ourselves in the Word of God. Remember, when, everything, when anything happens in your life, the first place we go is the Word of God. 
Are you saying to me, Pastor Dollar, that we can live in a no lack zone? It sounds impossible. It is not. Let's release our faith to see the promises that God has made to us. And then we've got to decide whether or not we have uh, released our faith to, uh, to take possession of those promises. Now, here's what it says in verse 18, King James. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that, that fear him, that reverence him, upon them that hope in his mercy to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Now, this is God's promise for those who will, who will reverence God and walk in the fear of the Lord, and I'll, I'll define that in a moment, walk in the fear of the Lord. He said that God is going to keep them alive in famine. Now, look at this in the Message Bible. Same verse of Scripture in the Message Bible. He says, watch this. God's eye is on those who respect him. Now, respect, worship, walking in the fear of the Lord. You'll notice they're the same. Awe. So God's eye is on those who respect him, the ones who are looking for his love. Are you looking for God's love? That that you know that God loves me so much that even in the middle of a, a lack that he's going to be my supply house? Are you looking for his love? In, in the middle of needing a job or, or needing a place to stay or needing peace, look for his love. When God comes to provide for you to make sure that there's no lack in your life, that's his love. Look for his love. And he says, watch this, God's eye is on those who respect him and ones who are looking for his love, he's ready to come to their rescue in bad times. Wow. He is ready to come to their rescue in bad times. God is ready to come to your rescue in bad times. Well, this will certainly be uh, appropriate then in this time. God is ready to come to your rescue in bad times. Those who respect him and those who, 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 who walk in reverence to him, he says, uh, in lean times, he will keep, he keeps body and soul together. In lean times, when there's not a whole lot there, he says he'll keep your body and he'll keep your soul together. So here you see that God is committed to making sure that you're not going to lack no matter what's going on, that you're not going to lack in bad times, you're not going to lack in a time of famine, you're not going to lack in a time of a pandemic. Here's the promise, man. You won't lack because of the principle? No, because of the person, God. Now watch this. Go to Psalms 37, verse 18 and 19, and this time I want to look at it, the King James and then the New Living Translation. The King James and the New Living Translation. I am telling you, there is a no lack zone, but when we reverence God, and respect him, have a deep respect for him. It's going to be a big key here. Now look at, in King James first, Psalms 37, 18 and 19, King James, he says, the Lord knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. So there is a forever inheritance for the upright. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time, and in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. You don't see here God declaring that, uh, that you're going you're gonna to be in lack. He says you're going to be satisfied. Now, look at this in the, in the New Living Translation. It's really blessed me when I saw this. He said, day by day, the Lord takes care of the innocent, and they will receive an, inherit, an inheritance that lasts forever. They will not be disgraced in hard times. I hope you heard that. You are not going to be disgraced in hard times. You're not going to be disgraced. I, I know there may be a guy watching me right now thinking, man, it'll be a disgrace if I can't take care of my family, if I can't afford to feed my family, if I can't afford to take care of a household. He says you will not be disgraced in hard times. He said even in famine, they will have more than enough. Even in famine, they will have more 
than enough. This is a promise from our Heavenly Father. I am saying to you, release your faith, take possession of this promise. This is not just a cliche. I, I, I'm not coming with a cliche teaching tonight. I, I, and, you know, for you to go around talking about I live in the no lack zone. I, I appreciate you making that confession, but I, I want you to know this is real, that God will take care of you even in the midst of a famine, in the midst of hard times. His promise is you will have more than enough. Uh, why? Because of him. Because you look for him and you look for his love and you look to him. And we are living in a world today where people are looking to everything else. They keep looking to the abilities of men. They keep looking to the abilities of government. And, and nobody's looking to him. I mean, what else has to happen before you realize that God's trying to get your attention? What else has to take place before you realize that God's trying to get you to look to him, to pay attention to him? He is the one that will provide. He is your supply house. And I'm telling you, he has a promise. And I don't know about you, but for me and my house, we're going to use our faith. We're going to possess this promise. We're going to live in this no lack zone. Now, I want to take you through the scriptures. And, and these first two scriptures were just to show you God's commitment in his word to be there regardless of the time, regardless of the situation regardless of the circumstance. What we've got to do is we've got to begin, we've got to look at him. We've got to, we've got to believe him. Now watch this. Let's, let's look at in the Old Covenant, just promises that were made. And, and, and the, I'm, I'm going to the Old Covenant because I want to show you this is God's character. This is, you know, when you really know God, you know that's, you know that's who God is. God is the, a, a provider by character. He's He's Jehovah Jireh by character. God by character is not going to let, you know, his children and his covenant people be in lack of anything. And when you're connected with God, you're going to find out that his character is to make sure that you're, you don't be in lack in any time, in any way, in any day. And that's what I want you to see. That's what I want you to grab hold to. I mean, we're looking for everybody else to take care of our lack, and God does it better than anybody. God's going to take care of your lack better than a stimulus check. God is going to take, uh, take care of your lack better than a trusted friend. God is going to take care of your lack even better than your job. But we've got to know this, believe this, and appropriate this into our lives so that even with the stimulus check, even with the the job, even with the trusted friend that, that you depend on God, even if those things are available. Because when those things are not available, God's going to be the one that's still standing in your life. Amen. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse 7. Deuteronomy chapter 2 and verse 7. Now, this is interesting here because, like I said, this is God's character. God's character is not to steal, kill, and destroy. God's character is to to love and to give us life and to give it to us more abundantly. Now, notice here, he says, For the Lord thy God hath, past tense, blessed thee in all the works of thy hand. He knoweth thy walking through this great wilderness. These 40 years, the Lord thy God hath been with thee. Thou hast lacked nothing. Focus on that. Thou hast lack nothing. Why? He says, because the whole time God, God's been with you. And that's what I'm trying to show you, that when God is with you, it, the same the way this ended, you shall lack nothing. Why? Because God's with you. That's the key, because God's with you. Not because of the, you know, the life coach ideas and, 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 I, and none of that. It, it's because God's with you. You see, at the end of the day, I want to be able to say I lack nothing because God was with me. And I want to make sure that God's with me and I'm with him. It, it, notice something here. Go to, go to Luke. I want to show you something, even in the New Covenant. Luke chapter 9, verses 3 through 5. This, this is the nature of God. The nature of God is to, to take care of your needs. The nature of God is to take those who believe in him and deeply respect him, that his nature is that there, there's going to be no lack in your life because he's going to be with you. He, he assumes responsibility for the lack in your life if you trust him and if you believe him. 
Now, there was a situation here where Jesus was getting ready to send his disciples out. In fact, start at verse 1 in um, Luke, Luke chapter 9, verse 1. Jesus is getting ready to send his disciples out, and he does something very interesting here. I, I want to see if you catch it. Verse 1, then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and gave them the power and authority to, to, to cure disease. Now, look at verse 2. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Verse 3, and he said unto them, take nothing for your journey. So he's, he's getting ready to send them out on a mission. You know, you can hardly send people out on a mission right now because they're going to want, they, they're going to want, who's going to do that? And who's going to do that? And what about this? You know, Jesus gave them authority and he sent them out. And uh, he told them, Take nothing for your journey. Now, now that would have got my attention. You're sending me out in the ministry, and you say to me, don't take anything for your journey. All right. He says, don't take stave, don't take scrip, don't take bread, don't take money. He's sending them out. The ministry says, don't take money. He says, and neither have two coats of peace. So don't take, don't take your coat. Don't take your, 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 your purse. Don't take, don't, take your, don't take your bread. Don't take food. Don't take money. What is he doing? He's trying to show them that I know how to take care of my people. Because, you know, you think, well, wait a minute. If you send us out without money, we're going to lack something. And if, you, and if you send us out without bread, we're going to lack food. And, and if you send us out without coat, and we get coats, we're going to lack, we're gonna lack a, a, a coat and warm. God's trying to show them something. He's trying to show them that he wants to be their supply house. Now, I used to wonder, what was the end of this story when he told them to go out and don't take nothing with you? Well, go to the book of Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22. What's the end of this story here? Luke 22 and verse 35. Luke 22 and verse 35. Now, watch this. Here's the end of the story. And he said unto them, when I sent you without purse, scrip, shoes, coat, money, you remember that? He asked the question, lacked ye anything? And they responded by saying, nothing. We lack nothing. Now, folks, that's living in the no lack zone. Sent them out with nothing. He says, don't take anything for your journey. And then Jesus said, when I sent you out with nothing, did you lack anything? And they responded, we lack nothing. We lack nothing. Why? Because they believed in the provision and in the care and the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. How about you? We've been trained to, to trust so many things that we've forgotten to trust God and here's, here's a perfect illustration that they lack nothing. So now what do you do now? Look at the next verse, verse 36. Then says he unto them, but now he that hath the purse, let him take it up. Likewise, if you got a script, he that uh, hath uh, no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. So what was going on here? He says, okay, you know, it, you know, if you have a purse, you can take your purse up. If you have money, you can take your money up. If you've got coat, you can get your coat. Why? Because now that you know that I am the source of your supply, now that you know that I am the one that will keep you out of lack, it's okay to get your coat because you know that's not your supply. You know that's not your source. It's okay for you to get your money because you know that money's not your source and you don't have to trust that, praise God. You can get your script, you can get your shoes, you can get all that stuff now because you now know that I am the one that will supply you with whatever you need and I am the one that will keep you out of lack. I'll keep you out of insufficiency. I just need you to trust me. I believe that there's coming a time in your life that you will take hold of what I'm preaching on tonight, what I'm trying to teach you tonight, and you'll trust God. And on your journey, you'll not have it. But when it's over with, I'll ask you the question, lack ye anything? And you'll say, I didn't lack nothing. I didn't lack a thing. Why? 
God is my supply house. There is a zone called the no lack zone. And we're living in the no lack zone when we put our trust and our faith in Jesus as the one that can supply and take care of us. Amen. Now, let's go a little further here. Let's look at 1 Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians um, chapter 4, starting at verse 9 through 12. And I want to read it in the, in the NLT and, the, and then the message. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 9 through 12 in the New Living Translation and then in the message translation. Uh, I just want you to grab these scriptures, write these scriptures down, meditate on them, put it on a piece of paper, fold it in your pocket. So every time you hear any voice saying to you that, you know, you should be afraid because of lack, you should just pull it out and say, no, I've got a co commitment and an inheritance from God that he will take care of me and I will lack, I will lack nothing. I will lack nothing. All right, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Verse 9, he says, but we don't need to write to you about the importance of loving each other, for God himself has taught you to love one another. Verse 10, indeed, you already show your love for all the believers throughout Macedonia. Even so, dear brothers and sisters, we urge you to love them even more. Make it your goal to live a quiet life, minding your own business, and working with your hands just as we instructed you before. Now, here it is. Then people who are not believers will respect the way you live, and you will not need to depend on others. You will not need to depend on others because the way you live, you're living a life, a life of love, you're living a life that can be respected, and you're increasing more and more in this life of love and learning how to love everyone like Jesus told you to do that. He says, if you'll live the life that you've been instructed to live, you don't have to worry about depending on other people to make sure that you don't have lack. Man, that's powerful. Let's look at this in the message translation. Uh, 2 Thessalonians 4, 9 through 12. 9 through 12. Message translation, 1 Thessalonians 4, 9 through 12, all right? He says, regarding life together and getting along with each other, he says, you don't need me to tell you what to do. Your God taught in these matters. Wow, that's powerful. God will teach you how to love. He said, uh, just love one another. You're already good at it. Your friends all over the province of Macedonia are the evidence Keep it up. And then he says, get better and better at it. Get better and better at what? At loving one another. And look what he says. Stay calm. Mind your own business. Isn't that something? Mind your own business. Do your own job. Look at that. You've heard all this from us before. So he's not talking about just walking in love. He's not talking about, you know, well, just walking in love at church, but he's talking about do your job. Mind your own business. Be a person of character, okay? He says, you've heard all this from us before, but a reminder never hurts. We want you living in a way that will command the respect of outsiders, not lying around sponging off your friends. Whoa not lying around, sponging off your friends. He says, we want you to live in a way that other people will respect you and not, not lying around, sponging off your friends. You know, you go to your friends because you make them your supply house. And then people don't like it when they see you coming. And then you get on the internet and the social media and start telling people what they ought to do and what they ought to give you and all that other kind of stuff. God's your supply house. God is our source for everything we need. Our belief in this gives us peace no matter what the situation is. In this series, Creflo Dollar teaches us how to trust God for our every need. 
This two-message series is available today for your love gift of 15 U.S. dollars or more. It's time to move from religion to relationship. It's time to move from faith to real. It's time to move from trusting the world to trusting God. I want to be able to say I lack nothing because God was with me. And I want to make sure that God's with me and I'm with Him. No more lack because of Jesus. No more lack. To further supplement this teaching, we have bundled this series with Creflo Dollar's classic book, No More Debt, for your love gift of $35 US or more. It's time to discover how to live in God's abundant supply. Don't miss this opportunity to order yours today. Calling all men from around the world. Join us for Mentality 2020. I'm nervous to share this message with you today. I got an honest question. I want y'all to be real. Because it's going to get nitty and gritty. I feel like we should be able to talk about certain stuff. Real men, real talk. We will get down to it at the 2020 Mentality Conference. The real man knows how to control his emotions. But a man that cannot control his emotions is the weakest man on the planet. Man law is a demonically crafted system of messaging, and this messaging is designed uh, uh, to attach our identity as men to pointless things. If I were a God and I wanted to develop you in the characteristics of Jesus Christ, you know what I would do? I would hide your miracle in somebody it takes you to be like Christ to love. Join us for a revival of manhood at the Mentality Men's Conference. You don't want to miss out. Register now at CreflowDollarMinistries.org. We cannot say enough how much we appreciate those of you who support this broadcast. Know that your contributions do not go unnoticed. Understand also that when you sow financial seeds into Creflo Dollar Ministries, you actually assist us in ministering to the physical and spiritual needs of millions around the world. You help us build schools, drip irrigation systems, and homes for pastors. You also help us provide supplies for children and the elderly. We thank you, and we continue to pray for you daily. Whether it's through our main campus or fellowship churches, our international offices or mission trips, every day Creflo Dollar Global Missions makes a mark that cannot be erased. To learn more about the work of Creflo Dollar Global Missions, log on to CreflodollarMinistries.org today. There is a purpose for your life. Introducing Grace Life Academy, an innovative approach to learning God's Word. Grace Life Academy offers unlimited access with hundreds of hours of online teachings. You'll have access to comprehensive video Bible lessons that include features such as e-courses, study guides, an online community, quizzes, and more. Text GLA to 51555 or go online to MyGraceLifeAcademy.com. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe. 